Hello everyone, this is the introduction to the Painting with Light Photography Project. As you can see from this example, painting with light is when you use one or more light sources to make interesting patterns, designs, or drawings while you're taking a photo. How to paint with light, the basic process. Adjust the camera setting to have a really long exposure. I'll give you more details about this later. Use a light source to paint by moving around while the shutter of the camera is open. You can see in this photo that maybe more than one person was in the background holding different light sources and it looks like the person is kind of blowing flecks of light um, from her hand. This project is easiest if you work in a group. One person can be the model or the subject, although you'll see in some later examples that you don't necessarily have to use a person as your subject. Another person can be the light operator, and a third person can be the photographer. And I would like for you to rotate the roles so that everyone gets a turn doing all of the different jobs. Here are four ideas to experiment with. One, interact with a person. Make playful shapes or patterns around a person. So in the first example, it looks like perhaps those are uh, bird wings or angel wings. In the other one, it's more of a uh, random patterns that are kind of circulating around the person. Here is an example of interacting with a person by turning him into a creature. Your person may be visible or a silhouette. So in the first photo, there's kind of fairy wings or butterfly wings behind the person, and then their face is visible because while the photo was being taken, someone shine, shone a, a cell phone light onto the face for a few seconds. And in the other example, you can see it's a silhouette, which also looks really interesting. Number two interact with an object. Here is one simple and one complex example of interacting with an object with a light. The pumpkin has a candle on the inside and then someone used an LED light to draw spiky hair. Another thing I like is the reflective surface um, that the pumpkin is on so you can kind of see a double image. And then the tree uh, was made with fireworks, which I'm sure took a lot of time and planning to pull that off. Number three, interact with a landscape. In this photo, Daniel Mercandante built a lighting device he named the Rainbow Rig by attaching household LED lights covered with strips of colored gels onto a broom handle. Daniel set a long exposure and runs through the frame carrying the rainbow rig. He has all sorts of photographs in this series running through forests and um, different settings. Number four, draw an object. Darren Pearson is a professional photographer that uses colored lights to draw all sorts of creatures. So we can see a stegosaurus, a unicorn, uh, a tiger that looks like it's in a cage, and a butterfly that was actually created um, by using a reflection in water. Darren is not visible in any of these photographs because he moved the entire time that the shutter was open. As long as you keep moving, you won't show up. But if you stand still for too long, then uh, you will show. Here are some examples of some DIY tools made by light painting enthusiasts. And if you look it up on the internet, you can find many, many ideas. So any of you that are interested in doing, at this, doing this at home, um, yeah, feel free to experiment. But please always um, be safe. Some people use fire and I don't recommend that. Um, for one, um, it's wildfire season and two, that can be dangerous. Here's a much uh, better way. Use your cell phone as a tool. Use the flashlight for white light or color 
uh, tape with a Sharpie and put it over the flashlight. That way you can make, make it a, a tint of another color. And the other thing that you can do is search for colors or flashing rainbows, etc. for um, a cell phone apps. That's what was used in this photo. So that's um, someone's cell phone in the background set on a flashing rainbow. And this is the effect that they got, which is pretty cool. Here are some technical details. What is a shutter anyway? I've been using that word a lot. The shutter is part of the camera that opens to let light in to expose the sensor. So if you look at the diagram at the top of the slide, the red line is the shutter and the blue green line behind it represents the sensor plate. You can see on the left is a uh, shutter mechanism that's been taken out of a digital SLR. And then right next to that are some shutter blades that have been removed. So what happens uh, when you take a photo, when you depress the button, the shutter opens, letting the light in so that it can hit the sensor and record your image. So depending on how long you have that shutter open is how you make the exposure. And the way that you take a uh, painting with light is to leave the shutter open for a really long time, much longer than you would for a normal photo. Here's some more camera settings. I'm showing you a Canon, so whatever camera you use may be similar to this, but the location of some of the uh, knobs and dials might be in a different area. First, set the focus of the lens to manual because there will not be enough light for autofocus to work. That's usually a little switch on the lens. Move the mode dial to M for manual. Move this dial to change the shutter speed and one option is to set it on bulb. The bulb setting allows the shutter to stay open for any length of time. It could actually be open for hours. Here are some examples of other effects made with slow or also known as a long shutter speed. So we have the uh, starry sky with the, the uh, stars streaking. We have a freeway with the lights of the cars creating streaks. And we have a waterfall that looks like it's really misty, but it's actually all three created with long or slow shutter, which has the effect of making blurry action. More camera settings. This is where you'll see the shutter speed. Set it to bulb or the other option is to set it for seconds. So you can start anywhere between around five to 30 seconds. Set the aperture to the smallest opening, for example, F22 and adjust as needed. And push the ISO button and then choose between 100 and 400. And again, you'll have to experiment with what works the best. So as a reminder, start with five seconds, then increase or decrease to achieve the desired results. So depending on the lighting of where you're at and the light source, or if you change your setting or the light source, you may have to change your time and your aperture. Painting with light your assignment. Take 10 to 20 photos. You may work with a partner or small group and share your photos for this project only. Make sure each person takes a turn as the photographer, as the model, and as the light operator. Remember, you can also take the photos outside of school. Evaluate your photos carefully. Choose the one with the strongest composition that clearly meets the project criteria. Edit. Use Photoshop to alter any of the following as needed. Improve contrast with levels. Improve the composition by cropping. Alter the color with hue and saturation. And or remove distracting details with any of the healing patch or clone tools. And finally, turn in your best photo to Google Classroom. 
If working with a partner or group, each person must turn in a photo that they personally edited. So I expect each person to choose their favorite photo out of the bunch and edit it personally and turn that in. That's it everyone, have fun with the project.